AD. Um, last week we began with three fundamental questions that we tried to answer. The first question, why African history? Just as a review, African history because Africa is the second largest land mass on planet Earth, with Asia being the largest land mass. Europe, of course, is not a land, is not a continent. It's the western peninsula of the continent of Asia. If we're going to be intelligent humans, it'd be nice to stop my tape recorder too. If we're going to be intelligent humans living on planet Earth, then we should know something about every place on planet Earth. Uh, if you think about your education, as I said last week, you've been taught virtually nothing about South America, virtually nothing about Australia, virtually nothing about Antarctica, almost nothing about Asia, almost nothing about Africa. Your education has been limited to Europe and New Europe, North America. And so why African history? Because Africa's here. And as intelligent humans, we should know something about everything in the world around us. Why the conflict of African history? I went through a number of statements last, last time that showed that there were a number of statements made primarily by Europeans, some out of ignorance, some out of racism, that denigrated Africa. Many of them, of course, were made around the time of the enslavement of Africans. And that made it easier to do that. One of the things you'll notice in history is that when people need to do something to somebody or to steal something from somebody, it becomes convenient to denigrate that group. Let's give me another example. Almost everything that is now understood to be Jewish comes out of Egypt. When I grew up, I thought the Jews were the first to circumcise people. I was told that, in fact. Well, now I know that that comes out of Egypt. And that the people we call Jews, more technically Hebrews, because Hebrew is an ethnic group. Jew is a religion. A person practices a particular religion. Just like Baptist is a religion. I can't, I don't know what your nationality is if you're a Baptist. You can be a Puerto Rican Baptist, you can be a you know, New Orleans Baptist. You know, being a Baptist is practicing a, an adherent, an adherent to religion. But being Hebrew is an ethnic group. You can't convert to ethnic groups. As much as I might want to, I cannot convert to Anglo-Saxon. If Anglo-Saxons practice Catholicism, I can convert to that. So now, the people who we call Jews, those who practice Judaism, I was told they invented circumcision. But now I come to find out that that came out of Egypt. I don't know very much good about Egyptians because when the Hebrews came out of Egypt and took basically everything from Egyptian culture, one of the ways that they hid that was by denigrating the Egyptians. They were bad people. And logically then you figure they ain't had nothing. Okay, now, when the Europeans take their culture from the Jews, they do the exact same thing. They do it a little backwards, though. They say, well, God blessed the Jews. They were the chosen people. But see, they kind of fell from grace because they didn't accept Jesus Christ. Right. <laughs> okay. I was shocked to find out this week, I was watching a, a, a tape that I'll show you all later on in the series about the Native Americans. Everything that became the constitutional government, pretty much, of the United States was taken from five New York tribes of Native Americans. They had a council that they formed that was the basis of what the United States now is. Benjamin Franklin went and studied with them before he brought those ideas to the Continental Congress. I would never know that 
because I was told the Native Americans were savages. Mm -hmm. They were backward. They were dumb. Mm -hmm. They didn't know anything. So obviously they had nothing to share. Now, it seemed like that's the same thing they said about us. And if I believe what they said about us, then I would not be in the position to think that, okay, it was a black man that invented the shoe lasting machine. It was a black man that invented the traffic light. Black man invented the gas mask. Black folks invented the refrigerator. You know, all these things that I've now found out that we created. Southern cooking is African style cooking. Southern graces are African graces. And Bernard McCain, uh, in a program with Bernard McCain last night, Bernard McCain says very often that white folks started acting crazy once black folks stopped training them. <laughs> okay. So, so what happens very often is that people will denigrate you if they want to take your stuff. Because then nobody would even figure you had anything to steal in the first place. Excuse me. Excuse me. I didn't know you were on, you on radio last night? No, they had a program for Bernie McCain last night. An oh, appreciation oh, program. Oh, okay. okay. So, the second question, why the conflict? Because there's been a lot of incorrect information given out. Now, I also showed you last time statements from Herodotus. You know, who was the Greek who in fact went to Egypt. And he said just the opposite about Egypt that what a lot of other people said during the 17th, 18th century who never been to Egypt. And then the third question, was the relationship of African history to world history? I began to explore that by showing you a film called Ape to Man that talked about the fact that life, human life on this planet starts one place and one place only, the continent of Africa. So, so far as we're concerned, as humans, what is the relation of African history to world history? Critical. Mm -hmm. There'd be no world history without Africa. Right. There'd be no Europe, there'd be no Asia, so far as humans are concerned, without Africa. When I showed the film a little later on with Walter Cronkite, I, I teased you with it last week. In the very first sentence, he says that his ancestors came from Africa <laughs> and the ancestors of the human race come from Africa. So that was our, that was our introduction. Uh, can we get a chair for brother there? Got one right there? Okay. So, so now what I want to do Good morning, sir. Now what I want to do is to move on and talk about why we have this confusion in our culture you know, as a way of setting up the things that Darwin and other people like Darwin had to face. There are basically two views of reality. There is the African view and the European view. Those who were in my class last time know that the African view is that everything in the universe is connected. There's a phrase by Donny Hathaway from a song he wrote where he says, everything is everything. And that's a very convenient way of talking about the African view. In Africa, it was said that God is everything, everywhere, all at once. Now, if you take that point of view, then you have no differential between what is sacred and what is secular. Everything is sacred and everybody is sacred. If you think about what are called the more primitive cultures, Africans, by the way, primitive means prime, first, not backwards. Uh, Native Americans, they all had a reverence for life and for everything around them. 
even to the point that when they had to sacrifice certain animals, buffaloes, whatever, they, all, they very often then began to wear the clothing, the skins of the buffalo, wear the horns of the buffalo. They built totems depicting the buffalo. It's almost as though they were saying, okay, I've got to consume this meat. It's going to be a part of me, and I'm now a part of it. Everything was sacred. In Europe, they have a totally different view. Europe separates things. In Europe, it's possible to say, je pense dans je suis. I think, therefore I am. That was the European definition of being human, be able to think. The African view would say, no. In order to be human, you need at least two people. Why? Because you can only be declared as human by another human to whom you have acted humanely. So the definition of your humanness comes not out of your self-proclamation, but it comes out of how you carry yourself, how you act, how you relate to the people around you. So again, in Africa they say, I am because we are. And we are because I am. Everything is connected. You've got these two basic views of everything in the universe and how the universe itself is structured. Because Europeans had that particular view, they were then able to say that I am the most important thing in the universe. Me, man. I've got preeminence over everything. And therefore I also have the right to do with everything whatever I damn well please. That was not the African view. The limitations within the African view. I could, yes sir. I don't want to freak you okay. off. Yeah. You, know, you, must, you must have a relationship with things. You can't just in order to do some of the things the Europeans have done, they at first have to cut themselves off and separate themselves from the other thing. When you're tied very closely to somebody and to other things, there are certain things you cannot do to them. I belong to a national fraternity. And national fraternity is based upon brotherhood. Well, now politics has gotten involved in many national fraternities. And brothers are now competing against each other for offices, national offices, regional offices, chapter offices. And just the process of the politics says that I'm the one who wants this office. And I'm going to have to do whatever is necessary to get it. I watched the campaigns for the, the governorship in Virginia. I don't vote Virginia. I decide up front that I hope that Jerry Kilgore lost. Because every single commercial he ran was a negative hit on Kane. I don't know Kane, didn't know Kilgore. But I noticed that Kane talked about what he had done of value and what he wanted to do in the future. And Kilgore's commercial, I can always tell in the first three or four sentences because it was something negative about Kane or it was something to engender fear. In fact, the entire Republican campaign was based upon fear. That's the kind of thing that separates people. I can't imagine that Cain and Kilgore can work together very much anymore because of the things that happened in the campaign. That's part of European society. You separate yourself from things and that enables you then to do things to other people and to other things without limitation. So Europeans decided that man is the most important thing in the universe. Sir? Hold on, hold on, one second. They find this button on here. Oh. Okay, but Europeans also had some forms of religion even at that time which would have been opposite to that kind of thought process. Give me an example of one of those religions. 
at that time, didn't they have Catholicism? Nope. They didn't have Catholicism? But back before Catholicism. Then they would have had... Catholicism is Christianity. Right. Christianity comes out of where? Out of Africa. Right. Well, they would have had Christianity then, right? The religion before Christianity. The Judaism. No, that comes out of Africa too. All the modern religions come out of Africa. But didn't they have that? Oh, no, not, not the time I'm talking about. I'm talking about the seminal formation of European thought. They didn't have any religion? Yes, the religion they had primarily what we now call fairy tales. Trolls under the bridge, giants in the sky. That's ancient European religion. <laughs> Ooh, man. No they were <laughs> No, all the modern religions come out of Africa. If you think about it, a religion that talks about the brotherhood of man, it's inconsistent with European thought. That's what I was saying. I, I thought they had. Now, now what they did, they, they modified Christianity to try to make it fit their thought pattern. Yeah. And they decided, okay, God made all people. But he made white people over here, made black people over there, made red people over there, made brown people over there, made yellow people over there. It was a very famous um, episode of All in the Family, Archie Bunker, mm -hmm. with Sammy Davis Jr. And Archie was explaining to Sammy Davis Jr. how God had made these people in these different places. And Sammy Davis Jr. says to him, well, somebody must have told y'all where we was because y'all came got us. <laughs> <laughs> the basis of saying that God had made these people in different places